Welcome to the Cross Border Interview Signature Series from musicians to painters, from novelists to filmmakers. We're bringing you a diverse range of voices and perspectives, all united by their passion for their craft. And whether you're a longtime fan like myself or a newcomer to their work, we're confident that you'll find something to inspire and captivate you in today's interview. So join us as we journey across borders and cultures, discovering new and exciting talents and celebrating the power of art, and entertainment, which brings people together. Today, we welcome back to the Cross Border Interview's Brother Bicker Band. On August 4th, the band released their second single, No Straight Lines, from their upcoming album, Another Kind of Train, which is set to be released in November of this year. No Straight Lines, the song, will have you humming along from the moment you start hearing it. Now, this group means more than you can imagine. <laughs> Earlier this year, on June 9th, they dropped what they were doing and came out to perform at the 29th annual Calgary Brain Tumor Foundation Walk. I personally wanted to thank them and get them back on the show for their incredible support, but also to talk about their incredible music. Guys, welcome back to the show. And I want to start off by saying thank you for everything you've done for me and for the Brain Tumor Foundation Walk on June 9th, earlier this year. Welcome back. Thank you very much, Chris. Thanks, Chris. And, uh, it was our pleasure. So I want us to start with the brand new song, No Straight Lines. And I want to know, what is this song all about? As I said in our pre-introduction, <laughs> I had the pleasure to listen to it for eight hours straight. And now you might be saying, Chris, you're lying. No, I was driving through Northern Ontario and I had one song on my cell phone, which was this brand new song. And I'm 90% sure I started singing it verbatim about hour three. So guys, <laughs> where did this song come from? You know, if, if I, you know, we've been playing this one for probably quite a while now before we finally got it recorded. And uh, I think it came from a uh, a jam session. I think Ben, our keyboard player, had a riff in mind when he came, he brought it, he brought it to the band. And uh, the, um, Tom had worked with it and added some guitar parts. And then it kind of turned into this funky, bluesy kind of song that um, was kind of unlike anything we were doing at the time that we'd written before and you know it's just it's kind of a fun quirky the lyrics are kind of i don't know how you'd i don't know how you would would uh describe them but it's uh it's about yeah the dead ends on love and going and nothing kind of works out the way you expect it to and and uh with kind of a fun you know a, a fun side to it and we really enjoy playing it and it's come together awesome we're really proud of it so Jim, is this life imitating art here? Is there a story behind the story of No Straight Lines? Is there someone in well, the band that was in love and realized that sometimes it's not as a straight a line to uh, finding that girl as one would expect? Well, you know, uh, I can't really comment on that. <laughs> uh, because, you know, like, there could be things going on that I just don't know about, you know, like, uh, see, my whole thing with with the band is is for Jeremy and Tom to you know like write great songs and then let me play bass on them so you know like however they develop the lyrics I'm I'm not involved <laughs> <laughs> I just want to play bass <laughs> the the funny thing is that, that everybody in the band is is uh, is happily and long long married so it's yeah. uh the no straight lines really doesn't necessarily apply, but we like to make things up. So, so yeah. how did when did this song speak to you? Because you said you've been playing it for some time, but I can imagine a song like this, which it does have an amazing rhythm and the chorus verbatim, I would say, is probably one of my favorite songs that I've listened to probably in the last year because the chorus is one of those choruses that you can sing over and over again, and you don't need the melody to play it because you can just think about it in your head and it just comes over and over in your head. So when you first heard the song and you were first writing the song and getting even the melody to the lyrics, what was drawing you to it? Was it the, the melody at first or was it the actual lyrics? You know what? I, I think this song was built more on the groove. And because okay. uh, that, that uh, there's a kind of an initial um, organ or keyboard part in it. And 
it just it kind of it it i think it was built from the groove up and then the the lyrics and the and um the rest of the song and the melody kind of built from that um i know it, it tom i think actually after we first played it i was gone for holidays and i came back and and the song was almost was almost built and tom had put had done a lot of work on the lyrics and uh and then we kind of worked on the on the melodies and the vocal parts to add to it and and it was actually we released an, an album a couple of years ago and this was on the list to make to make it on that album but it never we never finished it but i think it all kind of came together because we've We've got uh, two new members over the last year. Actually, three. Matt uh, Matt Dawes, our new drummer, that you wouldn't have met last time. But we've got Claire Wilkes and Janelle Colson have joined us, and uh, they basically came in to do vocals on No Straight Lines and kind of add that Motown background backing sound to it. And uh, and they never left the band after that point. We <laughs> we kept them. We, we we kept them. We wouldn't let them leave after that. So. <laughs> for me that uh it it really all comes together with that it, kind of memphis blues motowny kind of sound to it and a lot of that has to do with with the just the way the vocals interact and and uh and and the melody and yeah like i said i think the words kind of came last probably it was the rest of the song that got built first and and the the, the lyrics were, were were not an afterthought but but built off of that so when you're listening to the song, when I was listening to the song, I, I, I found that there was a massive collaboration between every single member of the band. And I, I'm hoping maybe Jim would be able to talk about this a little bit. But how important is it for a band like Brother Bicker Band to be collaborative and be honest with each other when writing a song like this, even from the uh, the instrument side instead of just the lyrical side? Because I, I can imagine you probably are all wanting the best for the band and the best for the group. So being honest with each other is important, but sometimes honesty can hurt. <laughs> Easy, Jim. Did, well, did I, yeah, did I no, touch on a touchy subject here, guy? No, 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 not really, but, you know, like, when you, like, uh, when we went to the, uh, when we did the last album, right, um, you know, it was, you know, I haven't done a lot of recording, and uh, so that was a real learning experience. And you, you know, like you have to be able to work with your producer and the rest of the band to make sure that you know, like, it's going to be cohesive and it's going to sound good. And that learning carried on into this one, where we had a, a fair bit of time, like, with I had a fair bit of time with anyways with the drum tracks. And um, so, you know, I came into the studio and I had what I thought were just fantastic parts, you know, just like, oh, yeah, man, everybody's going to love these. And not everybody loved them. So then you have to be flexible and think, well, you know, what does it really need? And that's where everybody else comes in. And, you know, our producer, Christian Stonehouse, comes in and, you know, just kind of everybody just kind of gets the same idea in their head and they go forward and they do it. So. And it's been better this time because, you know, like I'm just, I'm not so nervous when I go in. So, yeah, it's been is, a good one. Is but it easy to, Is it easy to collaborate after this first album compared to the second album now? Because now you've kind of gotten into a groove with the band and you know the sort of the ins and outs and the uh, eccentricities of each member. So you can say, okay, I can pitch this to this person or pitch this idea to this person. Or is it more of a everyone puts everything on the table like when you're all together and not sort of just music uh, the lyric people sit with the lyric people and the musicians sit with the musicians well you know initially when someone comes in with a you know with a song idea right um you know it's it's the jamming that you do right that's where everybody kind of gets figures out and and you know and then, you know, like everybody's got their part and, you know, there's space. Everybody figures out where to leave space and, you know, that kind of thing. And um, and then it just kind of evolves from there. And then when you get to uh, a studio and you get um, a really, well, really good studio, right? Like we went to OCL and uh, man, oh man. Um, 
and then you have a you know like a top notch producer right and and then they just kind of add the finishing touch right and the stuff that comes out is just like when I listen to it on headphones I'm just it's really quite good if I listen to so myself <laughs> listen in, listen to it in a car radio it really sounds great <laughs> uh, well, I'm looking forward I'm looking forward to you know like uh, I'm looking forward to the CD because I mean we have now um, some of the some of the mixes are really really good and uh, so yeah but anyways now, did I did I cover your point or did I kind of get sidetracked there you you, you covered my point you got sidetracked okay. and you got me like three other questions as well so thank you so much but before I get into the other questions I want to talk uh, ask you Jeremy about the exact same thing collaboration is probably a big thing particularly when you have a band of the size of yours and well of yours you and uh, Jim as well how important is it for everyone to ensure that it, there's honesty, but also the collaboration is there, not just to say, I'm the lead singer, you're just the bassist, but we're not the lead singer and the bassist. We are Brother Bicker Band, and that's who we are as a united front. You know what? It's, um, it, it is what makes being in this band so special is the collaboration. Um, you know, I initially like I had done some kind of solo stuff as well. And, and I'm a, how do I put this nicely? I'm not a great guitar player, but I'm a good enough guitar player. And then, but I have some good ideas and I can, and I can sing well. And I have my, I have my part in the band and what makes this band great is everybody has their parts and we have enough of a like we've been together for eight years now in in some form or other and you know we have those open discussions like what sounds better a lot it's so collaborative especially when we're in the studio and we'll play well you try and play this and uh, what if we took this down and and bump this up a bit and then we'll make this pop and and that collaborative effort is just for is for me is what makes these songs so much better is, is that you have seven heads and eight with with christian and you're all doing what's best for the song and it's not about your individual part and it, oh that part didn't make it in the song well these other parts did and in this song is better for it so i for me that's what i love is the camaraderie and the collaboration in the band and uh and everybody brings something unique to it and when we all bring that together all of our unique parts together i i i love the i love how things turn out so this is the second song off the newest album another kind of train which is coming out on november 3rd if i'm not mistaken i see I, I see some nodding here so that means i'm getting that right because i wrote it down i just wanted to make sure i wrote it down <laughs> correctly so on november 3rd another kind of train comes out what can we expect from this new album because i can imagine after so long of trying to make sure you get the perfect song sound out for the perfect album you must be excited that you've got the date you've got the release party scheduled now it's just waiting until that actual drop date so what can we we hear on the new album who wants to take, take that one, jim what's that what can we hear what, yeah, what, what, what are we one? expecting are we expecting uh, similar songs like no straight lines are we expecting a mix of things of old brother baker new brother baker what can we expect to hear <laughs> well there's definitely a mix <laughs> yeah <laughs> jeremy yeah jeremy wrote it's a country a, song yeah yeah we've you know what it's uh We've got a lot of influence. Well, with a band this large, we've got a lot of influences and a lot of, I think we go in a lot of different directions. Like we take, we take, you know, I would consider us a, a rock and roll band, but we take parts of country and folk and, and um, blues and, and uh, Americana and even a little bit of reggae and some, in some of the songs and, so all every song is is different and we've got some really nice ballads we've got some really upbeat stonesy type we've got a stonesy type song our last our first album or the first release storm chaser 
off this album we released in uh, February, and it's actually up for a for a YYC Music Award Rock Recording of the Year. I'll I'll get that plug in, um, <laughs> and uh, and it's it's kind of it. I kind of think it look at it as kind of Fleetwood Mac-ish and uh, with a, kind of a little bit of the California, you know, that 70s California kind of with a country twinge to it. And so it's, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of different songs that kind of can fit into different genres. Like, you know, even when we're looking at the digital release, trying to figure out, okay, how do, how do we classify this song? Cause when you go to Spotify, you got to hashtag it with, you know, what uh, people are going to, want to follow and it's 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 difficult like this song a bunch a bunch of the playlists that were on for no straight lines it's their country playlists so it which which kind of makes makes me laugh because it, it's not really a country song but it's uh <laughs> Somebody it, nowadays music crosses it's, it's a crosses a lot of genres so and that and we kind of this to, you got to be pitching this to like kenny chesney <laughs> I don't think I haven't tried. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of those guys anyway. You know. you, your sound is very unique, particularly coming from a city like Calgary, Alberta. And I asked you this, uh, I think the very first time you ha we had you on the show, but I'm going to ask it again because you're talking about the crossover effect. Now the different types of music, are you seeing the changing of who the brother Bicker band started out as to who they are now, or are we still seeing the, who the brother Bicker band was when they first started out? It's just your, your repertoire of music is now expanding because you now have a larger band that you're playing with. Who wants to take that? I yeah. <laughs> I'll give you the shot at um, this one. Uh, for me, for me is it's um, what's been critical uh, for me, I think has been um, when we got Matt on board, Matt Dar, our drummer, um, that just kind of, that for me was just like, yep, this is good now. Um, not that it wasn't before, no shade on Carl, but um Matt's a different cat, and um, I think we hook up better than uh, I ever did with Carl. So that's made a huge difference for me. And then um, when uh, Janelle and Claire uh, joined the band, I mean, you know, like some of the things that you hear and some of the things that they've recorded, I mean, you know, like they're just kind of otherworldly for me. Yeah. Uh, they're really, really good. And, you know, they well, they just brought something completely different, and uh, it's been really well. I'm I'm glad to be. I'm just hanging on for dear life, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I told I would I would echo that. I, I mean, I think we've as a band have evolved. Um, yeah, as all as all bands do. I but I do think that that having uh, having I've always loved harmonies and and. Tom and I have harmonies have always been part of what we write. Yeah. Um, but uh, being able to add that and Matt's a great singer as well. So, you know, being able to add three more voices to that um, brings us to a different place that, that, and I really, I really enjoy, um, I really enjoy the flexibility and what we can do. And uh, with those extra, with it, it brings kind of a fuller sound and uh, may, maybe less, maybe less raw in, in some cases with but at, at the same time it's it's uh i think it kind of expands you know where we can go with our music and, and allows us for more opportunities to to uh to go in different directions so now I, i'm gonna ask a very poignant question here and if you don't want to answer i'm going to cut this part out but i just want to get uh your sense of what's going on in the music industry today. And I, I want to talk about the rise of the AI and the artificial intelligence, especially in the music industry. Do you see that as a bad thing that 
musicians that are coming up today are using more artificial intelligence to write music or even write their uh, melodies. And it it takes away from people like yourself, because when I listen to No Straight Lines, you could tell that there's a human aspect to this song. There's a there's an emotional connection. It's not a just I, I, I know you're you're laughing, but it, it's true. I thought you were me. talking about clowns, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's me just to speak for blue notes. <laughs> but do you see do you see the rise of ai as a bad thing particularly in the industry that you guys are in or do you even want to touch the subject with a 10 foot ball <laughs> you know from my from my perspective it you know it i don't i don't know is really honestly like i think there's always going to be that place for real musicians and real people right like because i think you're right i think i mean one of the things that we kind of um part of our band dna is is kind of that old school vintage you know part of what makes music awesome is the mistakes talking about clams like is you know (laughs) if you don't play it exactly right on like you might have messed up on the record, but you ended up in a place that is better than if you had played it right the first time. And and so the, that humanness, I think there's always going to be a place for that. Now, a lot of musicians, AI is going to open up opportunities and and make life easier, maybe. Um, but at the same time, like I I threw in to chat G, chat GPT. Mm-hmm. Um, I said, write me a song in the Black Crows style about a uh, Chevy 57 and <laughs> love and it spit out this song which mostly was horrible but it had a had a few kind of cool thoughts in it like we we haven't uh, haven't done anything with it it was just kind of a as a joke to see what it would do but you know I think it's still a long ways off from being able to produce but I but I know a lot of like artists that a friend of mine who was a graphic designer you know he uses it as a tool and he's one of the most talented guys i know but he uses it to make his life easy and to to be able to do more so you know what i in the end is it going to be net good or bad i don't i don't know i think for a lot of people it's a different a different tool to use um i no, think and the reason i ask and i wasn't trying to put you on the spot there it's just it's it's an interesting conversation for especially for people like yourself who have sort of worked tirelessly to put out songs like No Straight Lines and your upcoming album and other kinds of train. And I can imagine just going in and typing something in and getting a song and then going out and just typing in another into another program. Hey, write me melody around these lyrics. It probably infuriates you a little bit because you take all the time to actually put the passion that you have for your craft into your storytelling and into the the melody of your songs yeah and you know i guess <laughs> the way that i look at it well we're we'll always write and perform and uh and that's where the the real fun comes from is creating a song from nothing and then you know however long later having it end up on a c on a on a mp3 file and love and you know you love where it's gone and an ai you won't get that same yeah love right and 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 so for for me well it will it'll have absolutely have an effect on the industry and and it'll have effect on songwriters and have effect on who makes money and who doesn't and those type of things but I think, I mean, I'm too old anyway, for me, for me, I'm, AI is not going to be any issue. I'm, I'm not going to, probably not going <laughs> to use it because it'll take too much to learn, but, uh, and we'll still do what we're doing and, uh, and we'll have fun and we'll still have fun doing it. So, um, I, Jim, I, I kind of oh, agnostic say, on it. Jim, do you have anything to add to that before I turn to the last subject here? Uh, well, no, because I've, I've not actually experienced any thing that's been written or produced by ai so okay no thank you that i I do find it pretty cool though when you're online and you and somebody has pulled together johnny cash singing a britney spears (laughs) song and it 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 is very i find it very entertaining and and 
I don't know if any, if many people that could pull that that kind of stuff off. So it, it isn't. It's 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 got its place. I think. I want to I want to go back to another kind of train here because uh, the the one quote I often remember when someone's putting together an album comes from the American country star Toby Keith. He says it's always the hardest thing to do is to put together an album because each individual song that you write, you produce, you edit, you write. It's like a child for the group. It's like a child for them. And then you have to kind of pick who your favorite children are when you're coming up with a new album. So when you were creating and actually sitting down and finalizing the rundown list for the new album, Another Kind of Train, was it hard to pick your favorite children of the, uh, uh, the group that you had, especially with such a large group of band that you have and everyone probably has who they think should be number one and who should be number five, who should be number four, or was it very, and again, to use the word collaborative, a collaborative process for everyone. I'll let you go, John, Jim. I talk a lot. What? <laughs> <laughs> I would never guess that he's the talker of the group. Uh, no, you got that right. Um, well, I, I don't know how to say. So, go I, ahead. You know, I think it was it was pretty easy because all these songs we've kind of battle tested. We've played them along. Like there, we actually have three new ones that are that have kind yeah. of come come of age in the last six months and yeah. and have been kind of written and and arranged and built and recorded in a in a relatively short period of time and uh and those ones are kind of the ones i'm most excited about because they're the newest right but a lot the other ones that we have on the album you know we have played them ripped them apart put them back together moved stuff around done it live see what works what doesn't so i in a lot of cases in this album it was pretty it was it they kind of came together we kind of knew what songs we wanted to play and um and which songs were ready to we were ready to record and so um so so it was pretty simple and then when these three new ones came on we knew immediately that these three new ones we we have to get get these on and they were kind of a they weren't when we originally went in to record we weren't planning on recording these. We had we ended up going back in June and recording them again, recording these three new ones. But they fit perfectly with the just the feel of the album, the style of the album, and we knew we had to get them on. So, so yeah. my well, anything to add, Jim? Before I, I interrupted you there, sorry. Well, no, like I mean, like as as you you know as you play um, songs over a period of time. You know, unless you're using backing tracks, the uh, you know, like the songs evolve, right? So you know, like things are things have evolved already because of you know, like the length of time that you know the dent that COVID put into this whole process, right? So you know, um, I'm just looking forward to these three new songs that we've recorded. I'm looking really looking forward to just kind of you know, like they're recorded and all that, but they're not they're not uh they haven't evolved yet so i think they're going to evolve a little and um i'm really excited to hear what tom and jeremy have in store uh um with like the finishing touches on these three songs so yeah there's it's so between now and november 3rd What's next for the band? Do we have some performances coming up? Are we going to be touring? I know there's probably uh, probably <laughs> trying to ensure there's a tour you schedule. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Am I not supposed to say the T word around the brother Victor Bay? <laughs> well, we uh, we don't have any tours, but what, yeah. for the next little while, it's going to be busy. We've got it's all the finishing touches on the on the songs and yeah. uh, doing the. The final, like we've got a, a steel guitar dobro player coming in to to add some touches to some of the songs, and and then you know there's always things like percussion and shakers and tambourines that you add to add atmosphere and to 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 like put that cherry on top. Um, so the next next month or so, we'll be working hard with Christian to to get the get everything kind of finalized, get the final mixes in. Um, 
And then on the 22nd of um, September, the Friday night, we're playing Rocky's Tavern in Bragg Creek. Yeah, that should be fun. And that'll be a fun one. And then yeah. we're yeah. at uh, the 24th is the YYC Music Awards. And yeah. so we'll we'll be there with our fingers crossed. And then, uh, um, and then <laughs> October will be just getting ready for that November 3rd show so we can knock everybody's socks off and play the best show we can. So, um, yeah. and then so, we, then we got a busy November. We got a few gigs in November and then, uh, and then Christmas break and we're going to roar into the new year with, uh, hopefully with a whole bunch of playing opportunities. So. I want to talk about the YYC Music Fest for the the award that you're up for here for a second because I, I you you mentioned it twice and I keep on forgetting that you have been nominated. What does it mean for a band like yours to be nominated, particularly in Calgary, where traditionally it's not known for its rock and roll or it's not known for its blues. It's known for more of a country feel. So to be nominated and particularly a group like yours, what's it what's it mean to you? I'm super excited and super thankful. And uh, we we were actually nominated in the COVID year for our, for um, breaking glass for off of our last album. Ooh, yeah. um, and uh, unfortunately they didn't have an award show and uh, um, crossing but, fingers uh, this year's it will happen. <laughs> crossing <laughs> fingers. There's no lockdowns between now and then. Um, but you know, it, it's awesome to be, there with the kind of the who's who i i love the calgary music scene i think we have a great vibrant music scene and we have um you know lots of really talented groups and and performers and just to be you know can be able to go and hang out with them and be considered for the award is 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 awesome and being able to kind of write a song that connects with people that you know even gives you the opportunity to be there i to me it's 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 wonderful so yeah and what about yourself what does it mean for yourself and the band to be nominated for an award like this well i'm uh i'm just happy to be part of it i i had no expectations i mean i know it was it was i knew it was a good song but i didn't even know that jeremy had submitted it and then all of a sudden, you know, like there's email and stuff and, you know, we're, you know, we've, we're, we've, uh, you know, we've made the, made the cut, so to speak. And, uh, and when you look at, at all the other artists and, um, you know, like some of the competition that we're up against in our, in our, uh, in our category, uh, I mean, you know, there's some tremendous artists and some of the, you know, like what, what Jeremy was speaking to about the, like the variety you know, like if you go to the site, uh, the YYC Awards site, and you, you know, you listen to some of the uh, the songs that they have up there available, you know, some really, really, really good stuff going on. And, uh, you know, I'm just kind of, you know, really, really, you know, a little bit tough to be, uh, you know, like sort of with these, with these other artists, you know. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. That's appreciative. Uh, I want to end on this question, and this is the big one. Where can people find you for those who are listening, not here in Calgary, but across Canada and around the world? Where can people find you and learn more about you and even listen to the back catalog and get ready to buy that album when it comes out on November 3rd? Where can people find you? Awesome. Well, we're at www.brotherbickerband.com and you can find us on uh all Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, look up Brother Bicker Band. We have a, two albums, uh, the last one, Hospitality and Northern Charm, uh, or sorry, one album from there, um, and then the, the a bunch of different singles. Um, and then under Brother Bicker, it's kind of was a, kind of our first EP together, um, and that's kind of our older stuff, and that, that's more of kind of a singer-songwriter style with, from, with Tom and I. Then uh, and we've kind of evolved into and that music's evolved into kind of the big band kind of sound that we have. But um, yeah, that's where we can find us and uh, YouTube as well. And and uh, we love if you could take a listen and and uh, let us know what you think.
the links to all of those, the website, the Spotify, the Apple, the Amazon, the uh, old Spotify will all be in the show notes. So please check them out. And then if I'm not mistaken, I'm not trying to get on anyone's thunder here. November 3rd, another kind of train will be released. There will be a release party at uh, the Ironwood. Uh, Ironwood in Ironwood or Ironwood? Ironwood. Ironwood. Okay, because you, you yeah. cut up there for a second and said Ironwood. I was like, oh God, have I been saying it wrong the entire time? <laughs> Ironwood here in Calgary. Uh, please come out and support them. I'm going to make sure that my uh, tumor attacks happen around that time so I can actually come out and support this great band. And if you can, please go out, stream, download, purchase, No Straight Lines. It's out now, available on all streaming services. Get it. You will not be disappointed. I spent many hours with these gentlemen in my ears and in my car, and I think I've become closer to them because of it. <laughs> Jim, Jeremy, thank you so much for doing this uh, and greatly appreciate it and all the best luck for the upcoming album. Thanks, Chris. We really appreciate it. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Chris.